Hey guys, it's the test lead. And a common question I get asked is, what's the average day like for a manual QA software tester or QA engineer? So today we're gonna dive in. Of course, this is gonna vary depending on your company, your experience and your role on a team. But today we'll give you a high level example of an average day. 9 a.m. Morning briefing, stand-up meeting. The day normally starts with a quick meeting to give status updates. If your company has a dedicated QA team, the QA team gathers to discuss the task for the day. You review any updates from the development team, prioritize test cases, and plan your testing approach for ongoing projects. So that's the first setup. You meet with your QA team. The other setup is in other companies, you're a QA resource or a development team. So in this meeting, you're meeting with the developers, other testers, team leaders, project managers, and so on to discuss the current project. In these meetings, whether you're meeting with your QA team or your project development team, you just give a simple status update. You talk about what you worked on yesterday, your plans for today, and any problems that you're having. That way, everybody in your project and team know what's going on. And if you need help, other people on your team may be able to help you, which is why the status update is so important. These meetings help align everyone on a team's goals and ensures a coordinated effort. Throughout your day, team communication tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams might be used. Project management tools such as Jira or Trello may also be used to keep track of the team's task. 9.30 a.m. Test case review. Now your morning meeting is done, you can start actually getting to work. You may start with reviewing testing documentation, including test cases, which are simply different test scenarios that you're gonna carry out in your testing practice. For example, if I'm testing a login screen, I may have test cases for a valid login, where I'm putting in a valid username and valid password and making sure I can log in successfully. I would also have some negative test cases. For example, if I put in a valid username and invalid password, I should be shown an error message. That ensures that if somebody knows their credentials, they can log in successfully. But if they get part of their credentials wrong, such as the username or password, we're confirming they'll be shown an appropriate error message. This test case review process can involve ensuring that the test cases are up to date with the latest changes in the application and refining them for clarity and completeness or creating new test cases for scenarios that might have been missed or are part of an enhancement or addition. When you're first starting out as part of a team or a company, they may write the test cases for you. But eventually, as you become more familiar with the software or website or application, and you get more experience, they're gonna say, now it's your turn to write the test cases as well. So make sure you're not just relaxing. No, pay attention to how your team members and senior people are also writing this test documentation. This documentation may be written in a project management tool like the ones mentioned earlier, or in a dedicated test management tool like TestRail or Zephyro. 10.30 a.m. Test execution, functional testing. So I've written these test cases which list out the steps to carry out my test scenario. Now it's time to actually make sure if I follow each step, do I get the expected output? If I put in a valid username and a valid password, do I get 
a successful login. That's the execution process for test cases. And now I'm making sure that that happens. Okay, perfect. The execution resulted in a pass. Now I'm trying the negative scenario. I'm testing a valid username with an invalid password. It let me log in still. So that test scenario fails. I expected an error message, but what I saw was successful login. That's a bug or a problem, and I document this so that it can be fixed in a bug report. We continue this process for all of our test cases. We follow our steps. If it passes, we mark it as passed. If it fails, we mark it as fail and state our expected result, what we expected, what we actually saw. And we create this new documentation for the problems called bug reports, as I mentioned. We create these reports, the developers see it, they will fix the problem, get back to us, we test it later on. Meet today's video sponsor, Careerist. Are you interested in starting your career in tech and getting a competitive salary? The key to doing this is investing in your skill set and professional development. It's great for beginners. Manual QA involves specializing in software testing, an essential role needed by all tech companies to ensure the quality of their products. This field offers a fantastic opportunity to enter tech without coding, a college degree, or a technical background needed. You get work-life balance and career growth opportunities and even an option in some companies to work remotely. With Careerus Online Bootcamp, you gain the necessary knowledge, practice, mentorship, and advice to become a tech specialist. You can also see Careerus that have made the job switch on their website. You can also see their track record and awards they won for being an outstanding bootcamp. As a licensed education provider, Careerus offers an interactive manual QA course, which can be completed in 15 weeks with personalized guidance from experienced coaches. Over 1,000 graduates have already secured high paying jobs in tech across 40 different states with Careerus' help. So if you're interested in joining Careerus, I want to receive $600 off your price. Enter discount code the test lead or click the first link in my description box below. Now, back to the video. 12:45 p.m. lunch break. After a productive morning of testing, it's time for a well-deserved lunch break. Use this time to recharge socialize with colleagues, and perhaps even brainstorm testing strategies for upcoming projects. 1.30 p.m. New feature meeting. Throughout the day and project cycle, you may be part of meetings with different team members. An example of one may be a new feature or action being added to a website or application. This meeting will usually include a product manager, a developer, and a tester. The product manager is the middle person between your team and the customers or users of the application or website. They will introduce the new item as well as the requirements, which is what's being promised to the customer. The developer then gets these requirements and writes their code based off of it. As testers, we see these requirements and create our test scenarios for the expected outcomes to match these requirements. Because part of our job is whatever we promise to the customer and the requirements, our team has to deliver on. So our meeting is to discuss and introduce this new item. And we'll document it, learn more about it, and then eventually add it to our test scenarios and then test for it. 2.30 p.m. Testing bug fixes. 
As mentioned previously, once a problem or bug is found, it is documented in a bug report. Once developers fix the problem, they will give you a new fixed version of the software to test again. During this process, you see if the application now works as expected based on your test cases. If it does, you mark the problem as fixed. If it's not, you would document it as a problem still exists, reopen the ticket, and a developer will try to fix it again. This is part of the bug life cycle. Quick break. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you need help on your software testing journey, check out my website, thetestinglead.com. Now, back to the video. So far, you've created documentation, carried out test cases, and you tested some bug fixes. Now is your chance to explore and get a little creative. In exploratory testing, you're thinking more outside the box. You're thinking beyond the regular documentation for edge cases or uncommon scenarios. This involves freely testing an application or a website as a normal user would and documenting what you observe. For example, going back to our login screen, the documentation and requirements might just say, make sure that they put a valid username and valid password and press enter that they get the appropriate response. The same with invalid credentials. However, what if they put special characters or leave part of it blank? What happens? It wasn't in the requirements or documentation, so you're thinking outside the box, say, let me test for that and see what happens. As a human tester, you can think how other humans would and say, well, maybe I should try this or that. That's one of the superpowers of manual or human testers. 5.15 p.m. Wrap up the documentation. To end the day, you may go over and make sure all of your tasks for the day were completed. You may also want to document what is still left for you to do, as well as any relevant information you discovered throughout the day, so you know what you should be focusing on for the next day. Remember, this will vary based on company to company, industry, your experience, and so on. But if you're new or thinking about it, this is what you can expect out of the field. If you enjoyed this video, I'll be making one for automation testers very soon. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. But most importantly, don't forget this, learn something new today.